If you were to animate a project by yourself, how long would it take you? If let's say someone asked you to animate one minute of animation all by yourself, how can you determine something that sounds realistic and fair for you? In this first part of determining how long an animated project can take you, we're just going to talk about finding a suitable duration of how long a project should take you. I get asked all the time, how long would it take to do a minute, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or a full 22 minute episode of animation? I get asked all the time if I could animate someone's pilot or a full episode for them, with them just asking how long would it take me? This question alone leaves out a lot of crucial factors that might affect how long something would take me. And honestly, there's two other questions that are far more important than how long something would take me. And these questions are, how much would it cost? What is the budget for this project? Budget also includes manpower. The second is, when should this project be finished? When is it due? Because an animation production can take as long as you want. But if you give certain parameters like time and budget, it's going to dictate a certain quota or sacrifices that must be made to finish a project at a due date. I've worked on projects where a five second shot like this can take me several days to a few weeks. The style of animation is more complex, there's more problem solving, there's multiple steps and multiple programs involved. Whereas this 40 second stupid short that I did took me a single evening. Not complex, very simple, very crude, low standard. Standards. So an animated shot where it's not colored, it's very rough pencil test looking stuff that's nearly 11 seconds, maybe took me about 5 to 7 days. Not polished, but there's a lot more animation. But a simple walk cycle loop like this took me a very long time because I polished it, I in between it, I colored it. But I've also worked on 48 to 72 hour short films done in that same time and you can tell that I'm reusing assets, backgrounds, and everything else. So when it comes to knowing how long it takes to get something animated, it highly depends on many different factors, which makes the length of making it very hard to determine. These factors include how complex the methodology is. Maybe you're reusing assets. Is the production style complex or limited? Is it hand-drawn or rigged? Are there a lot of still shots or are there a lot of shots that are just fully animated non-stop? Are you doing this by yourself? Is there a team or a studio behind this? And I think that's why it's important to know how much time you have to finish the thing, how much the budget is willing to be put into the project. If I don't have a lot of time to finish the impossible, I'll probably have to get people on board to help me out. Because honestly, if you told me to animate a feature film in under a week all by myself, I could do it, but it would be the worst experience of your life watching it. So if you actually set a deadline and a budget, that helps a lot. And again, it's gonna determine how limited or how complex things get from here. But let's say you wanna estimate how long a production can take you. Like maybe a client is asking you, hey, I want this thing made, how long would it take you to make it? And people who've done this a lot can easily give a number out. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to make an estimate, but there are ways to do that. There's another YouTuber named Howard Wimshurst. He's talked about his own methods about how to figure out how long an animated project takes for him to animate, which is a great watch, by the way. And there's a lot of things that I'm going to borrow from that and put my own point of view. But otherwise, you know, I, I'm leaving a link down below to check out that video because it's great. So let's talk about pre-production. So this includes storyboarding, writing, maybe voice acting, and preparing an animatic or a reel. This pretty much determines the timing of your shots, how long it is, and being able to see which shots are complex or which shots are more mundane and simple. If your thing is non-dialogue, then you're probably eliminating some other steps that you might have to do. For all my CalArts films, the pre-production phase took me about three to four months because I would always constantly have to redo, change the story, and keep making all these changes. However, something like the City of Secrets trailer that I did for Victoria Yang, the storyboard just took me two weeks. Same with the Dream Bad, it's proof of concept. It was just a montage of really cool looking shots. It wasn't really anything continuous. Also, my storyboard drawings for my animation projects are very loosely and crudely drawn. So the fastest something like this would take me would be like a week or two. But remember, maybe you want to flesh out the writing, maybe you want to redo stuff, and maybe you want to create model sheets for the characters before you animate them. So that's a lot of other work that you have to consider that's also in the pre-production stage. That could take a few more weeks, or maybe even a few more months. In some cases, many months to maybe a year or more. So it really varies, and it's all up to you to decide how long you want to spend in the pre-production stage. I usually just try and get a finished animatic in two to three weeks. Not the most perfect thing, the drawings are really loose and crude, everything's not fully figured out, and I can play it by ear from there if I should keep working on the animatic or if I should just move forward to animation. If this is a project for a client, then there would be a lot of back and forth. Now let's talk about the animation stage because it's kind of hard to determine how long that will take exactly because there are so many different factors, a lot of independent factors, whether it's the complexity of a shot, which shots are just sacrificial filler, or which shots are high-end fancy money shots. But to find a rough estimate that sounds kind of realistic, we have to utilize some formulas, and I'm going to talk about two. And we'll be using some really basic math here. 
So the first one I want to talk about is the most simple. It's basically deciding how many frames of animation you want to get done per day. Now this one's more vague and it can be applied to something that's, you know, rig based, motion graphics based. It can also apply to the hand-drawn animation style too. The second formula is more targeted for hand-drawn animation style, traditional style. You're thinking of animating in twos, threes, fours, sixes, and all that type of stuff. This is based on figuring out how many drawings there are in the animation, how many drawings you want to get done, and how many drawings you can get done per day. And there's a lot of different factors that are considered in this one. All right, now let's talk about animation production because it's kind of hard to determine how long an animation would take because we don't know how complex a shot is, how much animation we need, how hard it is. So the only thing we can consider is the number of drawings, frames, and things like that. So let's use an example. Let's say I'm asked to make an animation that's a minute long and our frames per second is 24. That's the standard for animation. That means for every second, 24 frames goes by and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So you multiply 60 seconds with 24 frames to get the total amount of frames that represents one minute in a 24 FPS. That's about 1440 frames. So let's say I decide, okay, I'm going to animate five seconds per day. So five seconds times 24, that's about 120 frames. Now let's get our total number of frames. So that's 1440 divided by 120. That's 12 days. For a minute of animation, that is still very fast. And that would make sense if I was doing a really loose shorthand pass first, not considering tie down, cleanup, and all that. Or if I'm using a style where I'm just reusing the same assets, same drawings, and just copying and pasting stuff. Okay, so let's say I have another pass where I'm doing tidying up, polishing up the animation a bit, making it look better, some extra allowance. So maybe that can take me three seconds of animation per day of polishing up. So that's 72 frames. 1440 frames divided by 72, that's 20 days. 12 days for a very rough pass to 20 days for a polishing pass. That's about 32 total days of animation. So within 32 days, I have to get the animation done already before I can put it into compositing, before I can add colors to it or anything. The animation must be done. The only caveat to this, the only thing that sucks about this is that you don't know if the shot is complex, the shot that you're dealing with, because sometimes maybe you're dealing with a shot that has more than two characters, or maybe there's a shot where there's just zero movement. It's all just like background pens. But of course you can set a set days for how long you want to spend on tie down, days for how long you want to clean things up for, days for how long you want to revise things for. It's really up to you and how you want to utilize that time. No matter what, you have to get a certain amount of seconds done in the animation per day. But I think something like this is great for someone who doesn't really want to think about the really specific parts of the animation and just more so giving themselves an example time frame of how long they want to spend in the animation stage. But now the next equation gets really, really specific. If we're doing something that uses hand-drawn animation or many different drawings, we'd also want to figure out the frequency of how many different drawings there are in this animation piece. So basically how many frames a drawing holds for. If you're going for something that's like Disney quality animation, there's going to be more twos, meaning each drawing holds for two frames. Some productions utilize threes and fours. Those are closer to animate. That means each drawing holds for three or four frames long. Or maybe you want to go more limited. So every drawing holds for eight frames long. So what you do next is grab the total number of frames that represent one minute and then divided by how long each drawing holds for. So for example, so if you're mostly animating in twos or threes or fours, you divide it with that number. So for example, 1440 frames divided by two, which equals about 720 drawings. However, another thing that I might want to consider is I might have to redo some of these drawings. I might have to do another pass or there are two characters animated on the same shot. I would actually multiply the total number of drawings that you came up with by two. This is using the idea that every shot in this animation project is fully animated. So you're not really thinking about shots where there's just still movement or there's no movement at all. But at least it's giving us a budget if things go awry, if we need to redo things or we want to allocate some of that time to things like background painting, more time on pre-production, etc. Or let's say you have a really still shot in your animation, but there's one shot that has like six fully animated characters at once. Or maybe a shot where everything's animated in ones. Just stuff like that. Again, this is all just rough estimate. And thinking about tiny things like insurance, breathing space, and possible pitfalls you might run into. It's entirely up to you and how you want to gauge it. That's just a possibility of how many different and total number of drawings there are in the animation. Then I would ask, okay, how many drawings can I do per day? And there's a few things that I need to address. What constitutes as a day and a drawing? When I talk about per day, I'm talking about an average of a six to eight hour workday, but you can decide how many hours you want to put into a project per day. 
Now, when I'm talking about a drawing, I'm talking about a drawing that's ready for coloring. So this includes a rough shorthand pass towards a tie down rough pass and then onwards to the clean final lines. However, the films that I did at CalArts went straight from the shorthand really rough pass towards a semi clean tie down pass. There are days where I can get about 25 to 30 good drawings done, but there are days where I'm just not productive and only do about like six to eight drawings. Another thing that you might want to know is that the rough animation pass, the tie down and all that, they're all very different. Like I can do many seconds of a very loose shorthand passive animation in an hour or few. Tie downs might take me a few hours, but I can get away with partials and incomplete drawings because I'm going to fix that in cleanup. Cleanup is where a lot of time is taken, so those can take me many hours. And another thing that you might want to know is that sometimes I might just do the whole film or the whole project doing roughs first and then tie downs and then I'll save the cleanup for the last phase of animation. So going back to the video, let's say I can do an average of 16 drawings per day. That sounds comfortable for me. I can keep that consistent. That's a good median for me. So I would get the total number of drawings that I found out from the last formula and then divide it with the number of drawings I can do per day. And that should just give me a rough estimate or an example of how many days I would need just for the animation stage. But again, this is just animation alone. Then you have to consider storyboards, which I talked about, editing, backgrounds, and all that. Those are much easier to determine because they're more fixed than determining exact frames and animation and motion because they're all independent and there's so many different factors that you can't really foresee. With still images or slides, it's not as much. But it also depends on your priority, right? So you can spend a few days to a month just doing background art depending on whether you just speed through it or you want to take your time painting those backgrounds. It could take a few days to a few weeks just coloring every single frame of your animation. But this is also factored by the animation styles and if we're utilizing shortcuts that would speed up our process. So I'm just going to make an example here, all right? So let's say it's going to take me 90 days to work on the animation. Okay, then let's say I spend 20 days on just the storyboards and the animatic. Maybe that also includes some rough character art just so that I can use as a model sheet. Okay, let's say I decide to spend only 15 days on all the background art there is in the animation. And knowing myself, I tend to reuse backgrounds. I tend to just crop out a very close up part of the background and just reuse them for camera moves. And then let's say in 15 days, I want to have all the animation fully colored. It's just paint bucket. Maybe there's no, you know, cell shading. It's just a flat color. And maybe I give myself 10 days of compositing. So putting all the background art and the animation together, adding effects and post-processing and all that. Now maybe it's 10 days of post-production. So maybe that's like editing, sound design, music, putting all the shots together. Maybe I'll give myself 10 days. So with that in total, that's about what? roughly 160 days. That's just a little over five months and that's how long it took me to animate something like the City of Secrets trailer. I started around February, I ended around June. And remember, this was on top of my full-time job. So I had to make some sacrifices and caveats here and there. Now, something like this could give you a rough allowance of the minimum amount of time you'll probably need to get the project done. Something that sounds realistic and stable. From your total days, you can start dividing which time is like just storyboarding, animation, background art, etc. Depending on how you organize your time, this will also give you ideas on how to cheat some things, what to prioritize, what to sacrifice. Because there are so many factors that can come into play here. How much I'm willing to spend on a project, if there are shortcuts I can utilize, if the style is complex or simple, am I experimenting with a different pipeline? If it's by myself, that timeline can be anything. And that's why if you started an animation project, I would recommend just setting a deadline and see what you can do from there and play with your instincts. But the formulas that I used here is just like me thinking about if I were to do everything by myself. The number of days can be shortened if you brought people on board too. While you're busy working on one scene, your teammate can be working on the other, getting work done simultaneously. A lot of times I get clients asking me to do an animation project for them, and most of them don't really know the animation workflow, the process, how long something takes, and that animation alone is a lot of work and can be expensive. And it's especially expensive when they're asking for something that's like high budget, fully animated, studio level work. So if it's a client, I usually ask them what their budget is and when they would need it done. And of course, compromises can be made. Then with the budget and time frame, I'll tell them exactly what they're going to get and what I would suggest if they have a certain style in mind. And of course there are compromises we can make and that's the thing about negotiation. If they're asking for the impossible with little budget and little compromises and no room for negotiation, I just turn it down completely because I know I can make personal projects that will reap bigger benefits for myself in the long run. Because animation can be a huge, huge time sink and time is a budget that we're all running out of. But if you're doing this for personal projects and you just wanna set a time frame of how long you wanna spend on it before you move on to the next project that you have in mind, well, I hope this video sort of helps. Anyways, that's all. Bye. 
interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end, have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.